everybody. Welcome to the 20 minute. <laughs> okay, so I nearly call it the 20 minute fishing school. Welcome to 20 minute fishing school, uh, where I can tell you everything I know about fishing in less than 20 minutes. That was bizarre. It's the 20 minute cooking school, which is really a lot more of my expertise. So I think I should stick to cooking. Uh, the 20 minute cooking school is all about those easy, simple tips and tricks that make your cooking that much easier, faster, and more delicious. I am here today discussing by popular request, a very important subject as we approach the holidays. This is the holiday countdown. And the question is, can I stuff my bra with potatoes? The answer is no, but I can tell you a lot about mashed potatoes instead. Uh, I get a lot of questions about mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes very uh, kind of consistently because are really high, highly searched on the interwebs. Uh, so I thought I would kind of uh, just mash some potatoes. Uh, thank you to my cousin Mike for suggesting the idea and then to a ton of people who are like, yes, mashed potatoes, what do you do, what do you do? Okay, so without further ado, in 20 minutes we are gonna make some beautiful mashed potatoes. I have a little bit of a cheat on the go here so that I can show you all of the best tips, tricks, and etc. Bruce Celery, hello, I just saw you at lunchtime. Uh, more on that in a minute. So three key moments in the life journey of good mashed potatoes. Uh, key moment number one is choosing your spud. So uh, this here is a Yukon gold potato uh, invented in Canada just over 50 years ago and it is what I, it's my go-to for baked, roasted, mashed, soup, whatever. I pretty much only buy Yukon Golds, and I recommend that you do the same, and I'm not working, working for them. Um, they are just a really good all-purpose potato, also Canadian. Uh, that's all I gotta say. Choose Yukon Golds. Um, you're not really gonna go wrong. A russet potato, which is like, you know, the dark-skinned, kind of ginormous one that you kind of normally would think of as a baked potato, also fine for um, baked, for mashed potatoes, not the best, they kind of fall apart. Uh, red skin potatoes, not great for mashed potatoes. They're just a bit waxier. Listen, forget everything else you know about potatoes or potatoes or whatever you call them. Uh, just get Yukon Golds. Whatever your potato needs are Yukon Gold. What kind of potato do you need? You need Yukon Golds. So, I'm gonna peel some Yukon Golds. Uh, fantastic, world's most important kitchen tool almost, one of the top five for sure. I like this Y peeler. Uh, why is it called a Y peeler? Because it looks like a Y. Come on guys, we are really breaking, we are breaking some barriers here today. Uh, I'm so glad you love mashed potatoes. So does Abby. Why doesn't Thomas like mashed potatoes? Thomas does not like, oh this is going to be a long list, Kraft Dinner, uh, chicken nuggets, mashed potatoes, chocolate. So I'm gonna peel this potato. <laughs> I'm trying to stay calm. I'm gonna peel it way up here, which is really uncomfortable. Um, I'm gonna peel, peel the potatoes. The second point of uh, kind of differentiation for my potatoes, or for what I think are always great mashed potatoes, is coming up next, uh, cliffhanger. Uh, if you're just tuning in, welcome to the 20 Minute Cooking School. It is the holiday countdown, and we are tackling mashed potatoes, which are probably gonna be on your menu sometime in the next two weeks. Am I right? Am I wrong? It is also Hanukkah, uh, and so maybe you are making latkes. If so, can you please send some to me? I love latkes. I don't think Thomas is from this planet, Mike, and frankly, I think I'm gonna revoke his status as a tansy. Doesn't like mashed potatoes, doesn't like shepherd's pie. Um, However, however, does like his steak rare. Yeah. Um, so, what? What does it say? So, I get a lot of questions about, okay, do I put them in cold water and, and then bring them to a boil? Do I put them in boiling water? Uh, what happens if I peel them too early? Will they turn black? Um, yes, you do have to peel them, Bruce. Um, there are nutrients in the skin, but the thing is that if you want creamy, smooth mashed potatoes, you're gonna have to get rid of the skin. Uh, if you really love the skin, go for it, and then you're gonna have smashed potatoes as opposed to like mashed potatoes. Uh, good question, thank you very much. Um, so what I do with mashed potatoes is I put them into the cold water, into the pot. I'll show you the pot. Let's go to the pot, we're going to the pot. I put them into the pot. I cut these, I'm only doing two because I already did three and I'm having these for dinner. I cut them just in half into the pot 
And then I cover with cold water, go on to the tap. Come with me to the tap, won't you? Here we are. My wonderful touch tap. Ooh, water. And my mom used to only put like an inch and a half of water into the bottom and then they would sort of steam. Uh, I've never been able to make that work successfully. How do you like my bend? Uh, if you're wondering, by the way, why I look so glamorous, <laughs> it's because I'm always glamorous. Uh, I was at Cityland today, so I have my eyelashes on. I always feel very glam. Okay, here is the second real key to uh, great mashed potatoes. <laughs> it's a key to pretty much the entire repertoire of the 20 minute cooking school. It's the salt. So. Remember back a couple weeks ago when we talked about how important it is to salt your pasta water and it probably was more salt than you thought you needed for pasta? And a lot of you have uh, chimed in, written to me, told me in notes and postcards um, how it's such a game changer. When you actually go for it and really salt the water for your pasta, it changes the way the pasta behaves for the whole rest of its life before it goes into your belly. It's so much more flavorful. Well, the same goes for mashed potatoes and for any potato that you're gonna boil first. So this is really my opportunity to get in there and season every little tiny micro molecule of these potatoes. So um, you can see that I've got this pot of potatoes. There's only two, but there's probably about two cups of water in there. So this is half a teaspoon of table salt, table salt, table salt, and almost another half of a teaspoon. So it seems like a lot, right? And I, oh God, oh God, sorry, you're getting a bit crooked. Come back to me, baby. Come back. Okay, if you fall out of this holder, we're gonna be in trouble. All right, it's live, we're live. Um, sometimes people, um, you know, they think, oh, I'll just put a little bit of salt in the water. That, you may as well not. You may, honestly, if you're just gonna sprinkle a tiny little bit of salt in there, you may as well just not add any salt because uh, it's really not gonna do anything. The idea with salting water that you cook vegetables in is you, uh, you need to make it taste salty. Crazy. Okay, so cold water into the pot. I'm putting the lid on to kind of speed things up. It is 4.07, uh, which means we have 13 minutes left in the Facebook 20 minute live cooking school, the 20 minute cooking school. Um, okay, so we've already covered two things. Make sure you're getting Yukon Golds. Make sure you're gonna salt your water. Now, I get another question a lot, which is usually from my mother, which is hilarious because she taught me most of the things I didn't know about cooking. Uh, how many potatoes per person? So, okay, you're having 10 people for Christmas dinner or for whatever. Uh, how many potatoes should you make for mashed potatoes? And I think that the old wisdom was kind of one potato per person, um, you know, and maybe one, one for the pot. Um, I gotta say, not enough. You need, especially with these potatoes, because they're so good, uh, I would say do two potatoes per person. Unless like these people are really small and don't eat a lot, or like they're off carbs, which frankly don't invite them to your dinner party. Um, the good thing about mashed potatoes is, if there's not enough meat, the mashed potato fills the void. Uh, they're delicious, everybody loves them. Also, here's the key, nothing wrong with having leftover mashed potatoes. They can become so many things. Bubble and squeak, top of a shepherd's pie, put it in a soup and puree it, just saute it up for the next day for breakfast, throw a fried egg on top of it. Awesome, awesome, awesome to have leftover mashed potatoes in the fridge. So when it comes to mashed potatoes, always err on the side of extra. Oh, you put a couple of garlic cloves in the water with the potatoes, then you mash the garlic. And Mike Tansy, going out there, definitely a Tansy. We do love our garlic. Uh, well, this is good. Um, I like garlic, garlic mashed potatoes a lot. I really, my favorite garlic mashed potato is with roasted garlic, um, which I would do like another time if I had the oven on. Um, I would just roast up some garlic and that is a fantastic addition to mashed potatoes. Another great addition to mashed potatoes if you're looking to gussy, gussy things up this year, whether you're doing turkey dinner or roast beef dinner or just like life, truffle salt. Uh, kind of thing that you know somebody gives you in your stocking or you know you buy it on a whim for no reason. Truffle salt and mashed potatoes are like really really good together. Okay uh, meanwhile so I'm gonna move these potatoes once it comes up to a boil here uh, I'm gonna reduce it to a simmer keep the lid on it and boil it for about 20 minutes. What does that look like? Well I'm so glad you asked. I'm gonna move this guy over and show you by the magic of live television, that I boiled up a couple of potatoes 
just a minute ago in here. Let's let me show you this guy here. Okay, so, dear Claire, how do I know that my potatoes are cooked? Well, here's what you do. Okay, you take your knife and you stab it into the potato and it's basically like it's not even gonna stick to the potato at all. It will not cling, the potato is almost falling apart and uh, that means it's really, really tender. This is important. If you've ever had mashed potatoes that have like really small little lumpy bits in them, like just tiny, like the size of a piece of rice, it's because the potatoes were not cooked long enough. Um, yes, so there's no worry, really, of overcooking potatoes to mash them. Um, have you ever riced potatoes, Shell? Spoiler alert. Anyway, stay tuned. Um, so, yeah, the potatoes have to be really, really tender. Now, I know that there are probably some of you out there who like lumpy mashed potatoes. There's no shame in that. You can just admit it. It's all right. I suspect it's probably because your mom made them lumpy and potatoes are probably like profoundly linked to the limbic system of your brain and the way that your mother made mashed potatoes is probably the way you want mashed potatoes for the rest of your life until you have these mashed potatoes and then you'll start calling me mother. Then I'm okay with that. Hey, Lori. No worries, Shell. It's all right. You just know everything, my darling. So, um, the potatoes are nice and tender. The water was well salted. I am like lazing around here. What am I doing? I should be mashing potatoes. Um, here's a bowl. Okay, so we've talked about the two entry points. Number one, choose the right potato, Yukon Gold. Number two, salt your water like you are trying to make it taste like the ocean. Really salty. Number three does involve a piece of gear, the potato ricer. So, Absolutely no problem if you don't have one, just use a potato masher. But this, I find, is the secret to making mashed potatoes that people kind of come up to you and they go, what did you do to those potatoes? Like, what did you put in them? I'm really gonna put almost nothing in these. There's gonna be no three and a half cups of whipping cream. There's gonna be no pound and a half of butter. There's gonna be nothing. It's just gonna be the amazing texture that you get from the ricer. What is a ricer? Well, it's like a little, canister and a little plungy bit and the well I'll show you you know what I'm just gonna go ahead and show you so once these potatoes are really tender and again tenderness is key plop one in there and then this is actually super fun it will just let's just lower you down here so we can see da 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 so you see how it kind of turns into like almost little grains of rice? So steamy. Um, and so what, what that does to the potato is it kind of simultaneously, I'm, I'm going to get a little sciency on you, just a little sciency. Um, it simultaneously activates the starch in the potatoes and mashes them at the same time. So that's kind of what you want with a mashed potato is something that is a little bit starchy but also has... A fluffiness to it right so the ricer does both things it activates the starch but it also kind of aerates it ah really really it sounds good to me no it's true um, so it's really really fabulous that's also the reason why that texture thing is the reason why you cannot um, make mashed potatoes in the food processor the food processor is too much and it activates the starch in the potato too much and it makes it gloopy Gloopy, appropriate for hanging wallpaper, not appropriate for serving to your loved ones. Possibly appropriate to serving to people you never want to have back in your house again because they'll go home and they'll say, those potatoes that Claire made were so gloopy we can never go back to her house. And then you're sitting at home going. But these are for people who, whom you love. So it's also really easy. Uh, I did used to rice my potatoes. Uh, actually, Bruce mentioned this. I used to rice my potatoes um, what, they still have their peel on, so I boil them in the peel and then rice them and then the peel kind of comes off um, uh, like when you push them through the, you know what I mean, right? Not as good, not as good, because it takes a lot of work. This was so easy. How fast was that, right? Uh, okay, Lori, no problem. You watch whatever. That's this video lives forever. Um, okay, so check this out now. This pile of like fluffy goodness and literally all I have to do now is kind of like stir it together. 
There we are. Um, these potatoes are looking a little dry to me, so I'm gonna add just a little bit of uh, milk. Yes, I used to add a ton of cream to my mashed potatoes. I used to add um, a ton of butter, uh, which is nothing wrong with that. And certainly if you've ever had that um, wonderful Jean-Georges Von Gerichten uh, recipe, which is basically an equal amount of cream and butter to uh, the amount of potato that you have, bit excessive, just saying, really good, but a little bit excessive. So what the milk just sort of adds a little bit more moisture into the potato, especially good if you're making it in advance. And yes, you can make these, I make mashed potatoes in advance all the time. Maybe not the day in advance, but certainly earlier in the day, I put them in a microwavable dish, cover it with saran wrap, pop it in the microwave, get it really, really, really piping hot, give it a stir, dunzi roomy. Because nobody really wants to be mashing potatoes at the last minute. My uncle Brian was always, you know, we'd have these big family parties and uncle Brian was always called upon to, um, mash the potatoes and there'd be like, you know, 25 people. There'd be potatoes from here to next week. Now, of course, the secret fourth key moment of uh, mashed potatoes, as it is with any um, dish, is you got to taste it. Now, remember, all I've done is I've taken the potatoes out of the salted water and I've added about three tablespoons of milk, roughly. Done. It's good. It's delicious. Doesn't need any more salt. Mmm. It's really soft. It's so good. I would say this would certainly be fine with some cream or butter added to it, but it's silky, it's smooth. Um, you could add any kind of thing. So now you could add some truffle salt, you could add some roasted garlic, you could add cheese, parmesan, um, pesto. Mm. But it doesn't need anything. It's so silky. And this is it. I remember serving these to a friend of Michael's, a Brit. And he kind of like, he still talks about them. This is probably four years ago I served him, served him these mashed potatoes for the first time. They're really good. They're really creamy and smooth. So, mm. Okay, I'm gonna stop because I'm gonna save these. And we'll have them for dinner tonight with sausages. And maybe some braised cabbage. It's only 4.18. Uh, hit me with your potato questions if you have any. Um, mashed potato questions, etc. Um, but otherwise, remember your three key points, Yukon Gold, tons of salt, and use a ricer. As I said, if you don't have a ricer, they're about $30, $35. Um, OXO makes a great one. Um, uh, you don't need anything too fancy. You can also use like a food mill. Um, just a little bit harder to, to uh, clean. <laughs> my, I put my ricer in the dishwasher. Um, and a great gift for somebody who loves to cook. Now, next week, uh, we continue the holiday countdown because next week we're really going to be getting into the crush of things. Uh, it's either going to be um, edible gifts, which I was going to do anyway. It's either going to be edible gifts, things that you can bake or cook uh, to give away as gifts, or um, gravy. I think I might tackle gravy, possibly make ahead gravy, how you do your gravy in advance. Uh, which works for beef or turkey, whatever you're having, or goose, whatever you're having, or nut loaf. I don't know how to make vegetarian gravy, but I'm sure somebody could tell me. Anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in to the 20 Minute Cooking School. It is so fun to have you here. Hit me up with your potato questions. What do you like in your mashed potatoes? What do you do with your leftover mashed potatoes? As always, it is such a pleasure to be with you, and thanks for tuning in. I'm Claire Tansy. This is Claire Tansy's Kitchen. This has been the 20 Minute Cooking School, and I will see you guys next week. Happy potato mashing!